Hi, I'm Jim Covington. Today is April 29th, 2013, and I'd like to welcome you to this week's issue of ISBA State House Review. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about five bills that are still in the legislature. The first is Senate Bill 31, uh, which uh, adopts the Uniform Law Commission's uh, Collaborative Law System for Family Law Cases. Uh, that codifies by statute where the it's a sort of an alternative dispute resolution system for family law cases. Uh, it includes a, a variety of process requirements such as treatment of settlement communications as confidential, establishment of an evidentiary priv privilege for settlement discussions, lawyer disqualification if the process fails, and informal discovery procedures that's currently being held in Senate Judiciary Committee as we speak. Second bill is Senate Bill 1044, introduced by Senator Ira Silverstein of Chicago and Representative Lou Lang of Skokie, uh, that makes four changes to collection practice, which are as follows. One, it allows enforcements uh, to continue beyond seven years without revival. Uh, two, it allows service of garnishments by certified mail. Three, it makes the recording of foreign judgments as liens on real estate. And four, it clarifies that a court in a citation proceeding may enter on any order that could be entered in a non-wage garnishment procedure, and this change is declarative of existing law. That's passed the Senate and is now in the House. The third bill I'd like to talk to you about is House Bill 3111, introduced by Representative Emily McCasey from Lockport and Senator John Mulrow from Chicago. It has passed the House and is currently in the Senate. It creates the Access to Justice Act that imposes a $10 fee on every civil litigant uh, to fund this program. And House Bill 3111 will become a pilot project throughout the state uh, to create a statewide military, personal, and veterans legal assistance program and coordinated network of legal support services. It will also provide court-based legal assistance uh, within a circuit court in each appellate district of the state. It also creates a statutory uh, court fee task force to sort of analyze and make some recommendations about what those fees should be and how many of them there actually are out there now. Uh, that is going to be heard in Senate Judiciary Committee this Tuesday afternoon. The fourth bill I'd like to talk to you about is Senate Bill 1768, introduced by Senator Kwame Riles from Chicago and Representative Ann Williams from Chicago to create the Supreme Court Special Purposes Fund. And in this, it creates by statute, it allows the Supreme Court to modify certain statutory fees by Supreme Court rule that affect uh, appellate cases and certain things in the practice of law. For example, the $25 filing fee for uh, an appellate uh, to ask for appellate review. Uh, some of the fees in the Business Corpor Professional Service Corporation Act and some of those other fees on this get it, getting issued the certificate of registration. There's a fee in there. It will allow the Supreme Court by rule to modify those statutory um, fees. And that has passed the Senate and now in the House. The fifth and final bill I'd like to talk to you about is Senate Bill 1528, introduced by Senator Chapin Rose from Muhammad and picked up by uh, Representative Martin Molin, Moylan from Des Plaines. And it requires the state's attorney, it does two things basically, it requires the state's attorney to inform the victim of the victim's right to make a victim impact statement at the sentencing hearing. And if a pre-sentence report is to be prepared, the right of the victim's spouse, guardian, parent, grandparent, and other immediate family and household to submit information to the preparer of the pre-sentence report about the effect of the offense had on those people and, and their family member. That has passed the Senate and is now in the House, and we will see you next week. Thank you.